Здравствуйте, товарищи. At the Grand Malatok. And I'm going to do a little bit of a recap of my Blade Show experience. We're looking at Friday here. Um, I'm closer to Atlanta now, so I took the opportunity to go, spend all three days there. Had a little bit of trouble uh, getting my will call ticket because the person I asked for directions, given that my phone would not load the directions for some reason, told me to go up the escalators right there, and there were none, and I was tired enough from the drive that I didn't think to say, you mean the stairs. I looked over and thought, what escalator? Am I missing something? Anyway, he quickly apologized, and the escalators were right behind him, so he'd probably been saying that all day. Anyway, once I got my ticket and went in, the first thing I did was something Patty's Potato Peeler asked. And that was anyone going to Blade Show, go up to Ben at Jack Wolf Knives and say hi and tell him Patty sent you. I did. By the way, if you check the show notes, you'll find links to most of the people I mentioned, if not all of them. Talked to Ben for a few minutes. He allowed us how Patty is one of the greats of the knife community, a genuinely nice guy. And was a big help to him when things were going. Also talked about his knives. They were a little rich for my blood. I could have bought one, but then I wouldn't have bought much else. But I tell you, they easily have the best artwork in the business. Next place I saw, I turned my head, and here's a big old sign for Tactical Everyday Dad. It was kind enough to give me this special edition poker chip. It feels like a poker chip anyway. You can call it a challenge coin if you want. And here's a nice picture of him, complete with one of the teddy bears. I already have a bear, and he was given away two more over the course of the weekend. I didn't win again. If I had, I'm sure I would have ended up donating the bear back to him to give to someone else. Because they're awesome bears, but I only need one. Next booth I stopped at was Transparent Knives, were the only ones who had anime stickers out. Had to pick one of those up just because. And he gave me this lovely little mini hank. A friend of his makes them, but he didn't have link information for them, which is kind of sad. As you can see, monocolor on the back and these awesome yamas with glasses. Wandered around for a bit. Saw a lot of places. Actually got to meet Ray Laconico and Sanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives fame. Three key outfitters had some truly astounding fixed blade knives. Very seriously well made, very heavy duty. Essie was there, of course. AJ, Abby Lyons, Abby, not sure how that's pronounced. Awesome work she does. The first place I actually bought anything was Brighton Blades. We already have the Hope in this size. That was, of course, my wife's. And I bought the Unity in this size. Then at the show, my wife said, buy more. Okay, I can buy knives. Decided to get these, they were the matching set this time. Absolutely love them. Wandered around for a while more. I spent Friday mostly doing recon. And then I ran into this guy, Knives Fast. Got to see his prototype knives, both the Mach 51 that didn't quite do as well on Kickstarter as hoped. Cry and shame, it's a nice knife. And the one he's working on now. Really cool stuff. And he pointed me right at Big Red EDC. And then a therapeutic age came walking by. I mean, seriously, if you saw one of these guys at the show, you probably saw all three of them very quickly. They were together at least as often as they were separate. And they led me over to Leong Ma, where I, even though I was just doing recon, I had to buy this one. It's an absolute beaut. Opens with a flipper tab. This one's still a little stiff. It's fine, but you can thumb flick. It's one of the few knives I can middle finger flick. 
and that's really hard to do on camera, especially when I don't have my mount. And I'm still getting a handle on thumb flicking. The display model, it was easy. And now I can't open it. We won't worry about that. And then at Leong Ma's booth, we were joined by women carrying knives. It was really awesome meeting all these people face to face after having seen them on screen for so long. Saturday was when I did what shopping I had intended to. I started straightway at Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I am a sucker for tinkers. And I like old pulp novels. And yes, I have read the original Zorro book. I don't think I've read more than two of them, but I have read them. A word about J. Bruce Boyle's auctioneers. The picture I'm about to put on screen is one of the original 100 Rambo knives. Rambo 2, I think. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But they had this one for sale. They were told that it would go for up to 12K, though they were estimating more like three or four when it goes up for auction. So if you've ever wanted one, you know where to find it. Then I went over to the CJRB booth where I started talking to somebody, showed a few knives. I wanted the Silax, I bought it. This is actually going to end up as a kitchen knife. Bill's a size we're missing. And as I'm talking to him, looking at the Mylea and a couple of others, I realize I'm talking to Dylan Mallory himself. One of the cool things about Blade Show is they will talk to you. It helped that I was wearing my Saturday Knife Live shirt. So, he knew that I knew, at least at a distance, Big Red EDC. And now I've met him face to face. All of these people. It's awesome. Anyway, this was the only one I ended up buying. It was the last one, the display model, because they'd sold out of all the rest. Pretty impressive for a design that isn't introduced at the show. Atlas here told me that per capita, they send more anvils to Utah than probably any other state in the Union which I found interesting. Plus, I just stopped because it was an anvil. I don't make knives. This little keychain they gave out, stamped sheet metal, sharp enough to open packages with. Next thing I actually bought was this lovely little QSP parrot. In the denim micarta. They asked if I was okay or if I wanted a different one because as you can see, it's two-tone, so the oils from the manufacturing soaked into the micarta. I like it because it actually looks more like a worn pair of jeans that way. They also threw in this sticker and this nifty little leather key tag. And that came in the box, of course. This is excessively easy to use. They showed it off to me. So I grabbed the Swiss Army knife I was carrying which was not this one, I hadn't opened it yet. Gave it five passes and it was suddenly dead sharp again after I'd been abusing it for weeks, cutting up boxes, opening packages and whatnot. My sharpener is still in transit along with my camera clamps. Okay, my camera's a phone. Still, you know what I mean. So I bought one of these, and I plan, when they've got them back in stock, to get the double-sided medium fine grit stones for it as well. It comes with a coarse and a steel, and for basic use, that's plenty. The last thing I bought was the tops. And speaking of last, this Fieldcraft was, again, the last one they had in this color. They had at least one blue and one black. I don't know, I just like the brown. They also did, by the way, CGRB had a Silax in olive drab, but you can see which one of the two I chose, but those are the only two they had left in the entire show. Sunday, last day. By the way, Saturday I also got to meet Tim S. and his wife J.S. So that was really cool too. I think I also forgot to mention that uh, when I first went to Tactical Everyday Dad's booth, Mattisfaction, Said Steve, and Snuznas were all there. 
So it was great meeting all these people, I'm telling you. Sean I met Saturday night after the show, but I hadn't found his booth yet. Uh, probably a good thing because I would have ended up spending my entire budget there and I wouldn't have some of the knives that I do now. On the flip side, man, I didn't find any knives from him. Great guy. Does some design work for two sons as well. Two sons, not two sons. Wandering around, I found casting crafts. Seriously, amazing, amazing resin blocks. Made me almost want to be a knife maker just so I'd have an excuse to buy her stuff. And of course, no, I didn't, because I, to me, they would just been blocks of resin, but they were gorgeous. Only thing I actually bought, these K-Bar playing cards, which also have trail markers on them. Like uh, Tinkers, I'm a sucker for playing cards. Now, as you can see, I actually picked up Jack Wolf Swag on Sunday. I'm telling you, they seriously have the best artwork in the business. There's some good artwork, but an awful lot of it is just logos. And uh, keep your eye on the line. If you're an art collector, keep your eye on the line. There's the flip side of the coin. Last place I found, Rosecraft Blades. They didn't have anything for sale at the show. They had demos of their entire line in all the color ranges. I'm telling you. The knives range from something like $30 to $80 for the most expensive one. They're using D2 and ARRPM9. Um, I didn't get business cards for everybody there. They had all their designers on hand and a fair number of the other staff. You probably know the Swags. Andy Armstrong was also there. Um, Hawkins Rose, I believe was the name. They were all more than willing to admit to which knives they'd made, designed, I should say. And it was probably a good thing that they were sold out or actually didn't have any to sell in the first place because I'd have ended up buying half a dozen of these. Okay, it would have been a good thing to buy them too. That was my weekend at Blade Show in a nutshell. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, this is where I tell you I did get duplicates of some swag. So, a small, simple giveaway going on. We have business cards from Leung Ma and Sanford Owen. We have nice, fast, and Tempest Knives sticker. One of each of Dylan Mallory's. I actually have a second Jack Sack coin. You saw this a minute ago. This is a full-on swag pack from Rosecraft Blades. And this just came in the mail too, so we'll throw in the phone ring from GNC Pro Box. All you've got to do is like, subscribe, and let me know which piece of swag was your favorite. That's how I'll know you actually watched this far. Das Vidanya!